guys, tonight I'm going to talk about frozen shoulder, which is my all-time favourite condition that I love to treat and have been fortunate enough to come across a few frozen shoulders in my time. And in my very early days of practice, I used to do it, unfortunately, and, and I am quite disappointed in that, you know, I'd be treating people people going why are they getting worse and before I knew it um, you know felt terrible that I hadn't picked up the diagnosis of frozen shoulder earlier it is a condition that often gets misdiagnosed and the terminology gets thrown around and it's really not a pleasant one because when you if you're told that you've got frozen shoulder and you go to Dr Google you'll find out that you can have it for anywhere between one and three years and if you're Getting that diagnosis given to you in the early stages of the acute phase, it can feel like a really long time, even just a few days or a few more weeks with that discomfort can um, not feel quite right. So it is one of those conditions that is called idiopathic in the medical world, meaning they don't know what the cause is. Sometimes they've, link sometimes they've linked it to underlying um, systemic issues, things like diabetes and thyroid conditions. However, I know that I've seen it in all sorts of people, um, you know, people that haven't had an injury versus people who have had an injury. Um, but a big link that I've put into it is the emotional link. Uh, let me go through a few more of the physical things. So for those of you who are therapists out there, and if someone has told you they've got frozen, they've been diagnosed with frozen shoulder and oh, there's nothing you can do about it. One thing that kind of gets to me is I think, I'm just gonna pull it up because it's written on there anyway, but the Australian Physiotherapy um, Association says that there is no treatment that benefits frozen shoulder. And I think that it's often underestimated how much support you can give patients um, with advice and just knowing what is the cause that frozen shoulder can take because it will get better and I definitely know that I've been able to treat it and I even know that some practitioners are very skeptical on whether or not you can treat it so this is why I want to um, share this hi Phil and um, yeah so frozen shoulder the early symptoms I'm gonna post a blog later it's something that I studied with my acupuncture training and it's got this all written down but I will usually get people to raise their arms up and the sign of frozen shoulder, it say it's in the uh, left, it's opposite on Facebook, um, is that their shoulder starts to come forwards to get their arm up. So they come the way up. The other thing is the little apple scratch. So turning around is you should be able to get your arm up, but sometimes people with frozen shoulder can barely reach their tailbone or they can only get to here when they're really restricted. The other test that I get them to do is um, lying face down like this. And you'll often, again, this is my left side, you'll notice that they just can't splay their arms out. One gets stuck like this. So those are the three tests that I use for frozen shoulder. Um, for those of you who might think you've got it, the early signs are a lot of night pain as opposed to pain when you're using it. Usually you're okay during the day when you're moving. Um, basically what it is, is you've got um, the capsule and the ball of the joint and the capsule literally kind of shrinks and tightens. So instead of having all this space to move, it shrinks over and you can barely move the shoulder. So people get it to varying degrees. Sometimes it can be all the way, you know, they just can't get that last little bit or they literally can't move their arm away from their side. And it's quite scary when you lose that function in your arm and you realize how much you use your upper limb. Um, then there are three typical stages with frozen shoulder. Uh, the freezing stage, which is when you start to lose that range of motion and it's quite acutely painful and a lot of that night pain. Then you've got the frozen stage where you're stuck in that position and usually there's not much pain. So for those of you in the acute phase, know that you will get to the frozen stage. Um, it will come. And then you've got the thawing stage where everything starts to free up and this is where you can push it. So I'm going to go through how I treat it because it is one of the conditions that I push through pain um, and really support my patients with. Uh, anyway, to go into a bit of background, um, I started Western Medical Acupuncture a few years ago and my little assignment was on frozen shoulder and the effects of 
Western medical acupuncture and exercise versus just normal manual therapy or um, exercise on its own. So I am going into quite a bit of the anatomy and the clinical side of it because I love this condition and I want you to tell people that they can get it treated with the right therapist. Um, so the big thing that I noticed was because a lot of the people that I've treated haven't actually had, you know, the diabetes or the thyroid issues is the emotional state of these people. And the most common one that I noticed was people who were looking after terminally terminally ill family members or they had terminally ill um, friends even if they were from a distance they felt really bad that they couldn't be there for them and if we go over the shoulder area the shoulders carry a lot around your sense of responsibility and um, the words people often use are things like I feel like I'm carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders I feel like there's such a burden and when they release it they feel like the weight of the world is lifted off their shoulders so again I always split left and right side so left is your feminine side which is about emotions intuition and creativity uh, emotional expression so left shoulder stuff is around often um, it's around taking on other people's emotional baggage and you may be the kind of person that goes gosh all my friends they always come to me to tell me all their their woes and their issues in their life and I will often say to them well do you listen to it and they say yeah I feel like I have to it's that sense of responsibility to be there for your friends to be there for your family when you don't actually have the capacity to listen to that stuff right now so the other thing about shoulders is it's very much about your ability to say no. And on the Facebook page, which is attached to this group, I posted a little bit about the shoulder a couple of days ago, and you can read into that emotional stuff if you like. So um, that's the left side. And then the right side of your shoulder is um, the masculine. The masculine energy is all about uh, being physical, the doing, the analytical process. So again, um, shoulders i relate them to it's giving physical energy doing a lot for people um again when you possibly don't have that uh, mental physical capacity to do so so pushing through and it's quite typical that when you're dealing with people who are far more ill than you so it doesn't have to be terminal illness but that's where i've noticed it a lot is that you can feel like gosh this person's so much worse off than i am and i just have to give and give and give um, at the expense of my own energy and frozen shoulder is literally it's telling you to stop it's holding you back and it makes you um, stop giving out all of that energy uh, what else have i noticed it in is so really high stress situations um divorce and workplace bullying as well so again bullying bullying is a thing but bullying also um, can be a perception and um, your inability to stand up for yourself as well so that is the left versus the right side and if we go into a little bit more of the shoulders it's between your heart and your throat so your heart is all about that love acceptance self-acceptance of yourself conditional unconditional love and throat is about your expression so verbally expressing and being able to communicate who it is you are so this is like that middle junction but very much about your sense of responsibility and your ability or inability to say no the most common thing is an inability to say no so my advice to people with any sort of shoulder issues is to listen to the discomfort that you have and learn to start saying no even for the smallest things and just see what starts to happen and it's a, a habit that you need to practice um so treatment treatment a lot of mine is letting people know the course that frozen shoulder generally goes through is to people want a plan they want to know how they're going to get out of pain um we generally want a plan for any situation like right now people want a plan of what they're going to do um so it's letting them know you will get to the frozen stage where the discomfort goes away. And that's usually where I can really get stuck into someone with treatment. So with osteo, we're very holistic, not just looking at the shoulder and just treating there. It would be treating all through the lower back, through the neck, um, finding any other things that are going on. Um, there's a really nice muscle under here, the front of your shoulder blade that you've got to like dive right down into the armpit to get, it's called your subscapularis. And that is a muscle that usually contracts and holds everything in so you really want to release that 
Um, but what I literally do is I get people lying onto their back and normally what happens, so, okay, say this is the bad arm, is my good arm can flop all the way back. The bad arm kind of gets stuck here so people can't um, tip it back is I usually um, lie them down and I support their elbow and I will push their arm back and there tends to be a whole heap of shaking and lots of noise from the person but what we're doing is literally um, stretching that capsule open by using the ball of the shoulder so this is where it is quite uncomfortable but I let people know, look, just trust me, I'm not doing any damage, it is painful, but what we need to do is open up those that fibrous tissue again and stretch it. And the surgical options for, or the interventions um, available for frozen shoulder is either giving you a um, cortisone injection or they do a thing called hydrodilatation where they inject into the joint like a balloon and then they blow that um, they blow that balloon up to open everything up um, or they put you under a general anaesthetic, they knock you out and they get your arm and they wrench it right back. So I don't do, I don't wrench it back but I do it in a very supportive space and it is amazing like just the, that quivering, that energy, that physical energy that's stuck in the tissues and it's often scary for people to feel how much their body is resisting it. But when and if you can get someone to that point of surrender, they just often, they'll just burst into tears and the arm just flops back. It's incredible. Um, really interesting, one of my, I, I had someone ask me who was a little bit sceptical on, on whether or not I was able to treat frozen shoulder and doubted that it was frozen shoulder if that was the case, if I was able to treat it. Um, and asked that basically wanted proof that it worked and it was hard as much as I would love people to look in is that you emotions don't get released so readily when you feel observed so yes there are people that I can get to release in one session um, like 75% of their range of motion and other people it takes time and sometimes it's because they're not ready usually when I needle through all of their pecs the bruising that comes out is really dark black stagnant bruising so I love to interpret the reactions people are getting um, and then I will usually send them home with some exercises where they're using dumbbells or pots to just try and encourage that motion to go back um, hanging as well and just letting that joint go but really educating them that okay this is one condition that I'll let you push to pain but you don't want to be so uncomfortable you know afterwards that you can't sleep um, and yeah, and then generally it's maintaining, doing things like child's pose and doing yoga poses and just allowing you, yourself to push that shoulder. Um, so I'll grab the Ina Segal book, which I didn't realize she actually did have a frozen shoulder interpretation. Um, sorry, this one is going on quite long because I really love talking about this one. So suppressing your feelings, expressing too much strain, stress and worry, not dealing with your challenges by numbing them, feeling stuck, trying to control rather than allow, fear of the future, that's the whole planning thing, wanting to give up, feeling like a failure, engulfed by problems, unsure how to heal your pain and sadness, and represents frozen tears. And I can definitely relate to the frozen tears in the people that I have treated. Um, one other quick thing, and I should touch on this on a separate um, live, is I often talk about the release of emotions, is that there is a or release from stress in the body is that there's a physical component, emotional and physiological. So uh, physical would be that quivering and just allowing it. So if you think when you're, you know, if you have that quick, um, you know, a close call in your car and then you're kind of shaking with adrenaline, it's important to allow that shake to happen. It's the body discharging that emotion. Then there is a physiological release. So this can be breaking out in um, I've had some patients vomit after a treatment or they get like flu-like symptoms like a fever um, or really active bowels like diarrhea, big pur bowel purge um, or just peeing and a real stinky pee coming out. And then the other one is the emotional release which is usually it can be laughter, laughter that turns to tears and it can um, yeah it can be the tears, it can be 
swearing. People are often surprised at what comes out of their mouth during a treatment, but I find it really amusing. I love it. So um, that, those are the three kind of releases that you're after, particularly with chronic pain. Anyway, uh, let me know if you've got any questions about frozen shoulder. There was a few people that have, um, I know who have had it in the group and others who have minor presentations. I think if you've got the minor presentation is really um, take note of it and what changes you can start to make. Um, and I think there is someone in the group who is looking after a family member. Um, so yeah, just consider that. Um, and I'm going to get in touch with that person because there was another link in the body that is related to the shoulder. But I feel like I've gone on enough and I hope you can get something out of this. I'm going to post my blog which has more information about frozen shoulder on there. And would love for you to share it with anyone that you know who might have this condition. Alright, see you later and I'll touch base tomorrow. I can't remember what I'm talking about tomorrow. I think it might be the wrist and hands or I might have gotten mixed up and was meant to talk about that tonight. So wrist and hands tomorrow. See you later.